This is our second session on Colossians 3, 22 to 4, 1, a section where he addresses slaves and their lords or their masters. And in this session, I want to talk about the implications of translating uh, masters as lords. Slaves, obey in everything those who are your lords according to the flesh not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work from the soul as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. You are serving as a slave the Lord, Christ. For the wrongdoer will receive back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. Lords, grant to the slaves what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a Lord in heaven. So, Father, grant us to get the big picture here now of the mindset that Paul is calling for from these Christian slaves, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, slaves, obey in everything and show how this is qualified by this translation in everything, those who are your lords. Now, that's almost always translated masters, which obscures the fact that the word for the Lord Jesus is the very same word. And I think that's important. The way Paul handles the difference between the Lord is not by capitalizing, they didn't show that in the Greek, but rather by this, according to the flesh. Slaves, obey in everything those who are your lords according to the flesh. There is the Lord who's not according to the flesh. He's according to the Spirit and creation and redemption. But there are lords according to the flesh. That phrase, according to the flesh, you can see over here in Romans 9. Paul uses it many times. But here's an example that is similar. Paul says, I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brother's my kinsman according to the flesh. So he has real kinsmen in the ordinary human way of according to the flesh. And then he has kinsmen who are spiritual kinsmen because they are one in Christ. And so Paul is pointing out here, they have a Lord, and then they have lords. You can trace that straight through. According to the flesh, they have these lords. But, and then you read and say, but there is a Lord that you should fear. You should be fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work from the soul as to the Lord, this Lord, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. You are serving as a slave, the Lord Christ. Now, that's important there because we've seen, we saw last time, this statement in 1 Corinthians 7.23, you Christians, slaves, especially, you were bought with a price. Christ bought you. Do not become slaves of men. In other words, if men say, hey, I bought you, at a profound sense, you could say, actually, the Lord Christ bought me, and I can't be owned by two people. That's what Paul's getting at here when he says, you are serving the Lord. And this word serving here is built on the same word as the word slave. You are serving as a slave the Lord. The fact that you are enslaved now by a human is secondary. For the wrongdoer will, will receive back from, uh, will receive back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. So this wrongdoer is going to be receiving back from the Lord. The Lord decides what's wrong. The Lord does the big payback. And then he says, Lords. And after all this emphasis on the Lord Christ, you can hear how small this is. Lords, grant to the slaves what is just and fair, knowing that you yourself have a Lord in heaven. So the big picture here in translating this as uh, lords there and there is that it relativizes the authority of the according to the flesh lord. 
the earthly Lord. And let me just step back and do again what I did back in the previous paragraph with regard to wives and husbands and children and and parents, namely to say, inside the Lord, God does ordain that there be relationships of authority and submission. At least five of them we can remind ourselves. There's, let's start with husbands and wives and fathers or parents and children. So here in the previous paragraph, wives submit to your husbands, children obey your parents. So it is right that in the Lord, it is fitting in the Lord that there be these structures of responsibility and support for that, an endorsement of that leadership and responsibility and authority. And then we can add to that uh, government and citizen, right? We see that in Romans 13. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. So you can add that, and then we could add um, elders and church. And you see that in Hebrews 13, obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. And now we've seen here masters and slaves, and we've seen how that's relativized last time in the way God, uh, Paul undoes the demeaning dimensions of this whole relationship. But what we see is that in Christ, these are not all done away with entirely. They're transformed, but there is an authority structure. And so when he says, in everything, slaves obey in everything, that means within the lordship of the Lord. And if the Lord calls a slave, to follow Christ, say, by not uh, committing fornication or adultery, and the slave master beckons that kind of relationship, the slaves can say no. It might cost him his life, or it will be done against his will. Here's an example of that. Remember the story of Joseph in Genesis. Now, Joseph had been brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian had bought him. So he's now a slave. Joseph is a slave in this household. And after a time, the master's wife, who has authority over this slave, cast her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. I want to have sex with you. He refused and said to his master's wife, behold, because of me, the master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything he has in my charge. So he absolutely says, no. So I'm pointing out that this in everything here is under this lordship. You see that running right through here. The Lord decides who the wrongdoer is, and the wrongdoer would be the slave if he obeyed the master in committing sin. So all these authority structures here are right and good, but they're all within the bounds of the supreme lordship of Jesus. Wives and children and citizens and church members and slaves are under the Lord first, and for the Lord's sake, they submit here. And that's what we see running all through here. This is not by way of eye service as people pleasers. This is sincerity fearing the Lord. And we'll come back to that in future sessions. So it's for the Lord's sake that this slave submits, in this case, to the Lord. For the big Lord, capital L, he submits to the little Lord, but he will never submit if the 
big Lord or the little Lord calls him to sin. More on that as we work our way through here in some of the details.